this video, I'm going to show you how to make a little 15 second commercial for a racing company using these special like blue lightning effects. So the first thing you want to do when you start your project is to import the media. I'm going to give you this car clip here and you can import that into your project and then we're just going to drag it directly on the timeline. We're going to want to right click on this to unlink the audio track. We want to keep that separate and then we're going to mute the audio track so that we don't have to listen to it the whole time while we're working. So the next thing you want to do is to click on this video track and Hold the Alt key and drag up so that you have a copy of it on the top and then click on this one here because we're going to make some edits to this one. The next thing you want to do is go up to Effect Control Panel up here and you want to put the blending mode on screen. Now we're going to add five effects to this top clip here so make sure that that one's selected. Then you're going to go over here and we're going to find our effects. Remember, you can go in the search bar to search for these. We're going to add five of them. The first one is Extract. So you're going to find it here, and then just click and drag it on top of that top clip. The next effect we're going to find is called Find Edges. Drag that one on the top. The third one we're going to put on here is called Tint. I'm going to drag that one on there, and we're going to find the next one is Turbulent, Displace, drag that one on here, and then the last one we are going to put on here is called VR Glow. Now notice every time I added one of these effects up here, it gave me, it shows it up here, so we're going to be changing some of the numbers on here next. So we're going to go up here to where it says Extract, and we're going to change all these numbers here to zero. And then you're going to go and move the uh, white input level and we're going to put a stopwatch to make a keyframe here. And then we're going to move it ahead just a bit, somewhere around there. And then you're going to change this to 180. On the Find Edges part, I want you to click here on Invert, and then under Tint, go to where it says Map White To. Click on the white and just find a nice blue color. Now let's go down to the Turbulent Displace and put the amount on 100, put the size on 20, and put the anti-aliasing on High. Now we're going to scroll down to the VR Glow settings and we're going to change the Luma threshold right here to 0.5. We're going to change the Glow Radius to 30. Change the Glow Brightness to 4. Change the Glow Saturation to 10. We're going to check the Use Tint Color and then we're going to change this white right here. Click on that white and put the similar blue that you had before. Now we want to scroll up to where we can see these keyframes here. You're going to want to move your time indicator to about halfway in between those two keyframes over here. Then you're going to go up to Opacity and you're going to hit the stopwatch there. And then you're going to drag the time indicator to where we have this other keyframe and then you're going to lower the opacity to nothing. So now I'm going to put the time indicator back here and replay it. Looks pretty cool. If you want to adjust the timing of anything, go up here to where you have your keyframes and you can move things around. So let's say I select all of them and maybe move them so that they happen a little bit later in the video when the car is at center um, on the screen. So let's play that back. Yep, that looks pretty cool. If you want to edit the timing of anything anymore, you can always move these keyframes around and space them out and change the whole timing of the effect as well. For instance, I'm going to take these uh, keyframes here and just pull them out a little. Whoops. I'm going to click on just those two. And I'm going to pull this out a little bit more so this effect lasts a little longer. And then I'm going to move this one so that it's directly like in between those two keyframes there. So this should be a subtle effect, but I just want to show you how you can change the timing of everything. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just move my opacity out a little bit farther away from that other keyframe so that it takes a little bit longer for the effect to disappear. I think that looks cool. And then also if you're previewing this and it's kind of blurry and pixelated, you're just going to need to render everything. So if you just drag a box around this and get all your um, tracks there and just go sequence, render selection, give that a minute to go, then you can actually preview it with better resolution. Put a whip transition at the beginning so you can find that here under the effects. You can search for a whip and you're going to drag that at the beginning of both of your video clips. And then what I want you to do is use the rate stretch tool on these two clips to make this go faster. So you can find that over here. You can press R on your keyboard to get that rate stretch tool and you're going to do these one at a time. I'm not going to give you an exact number but something like that and you have to do it on both clips and then I'm gonna select both of those and do the sequence render selection and let's check that out see now it goes by a little faster I want you to get a screenshot of uh, one of the frames in the video so scroll through here until you find one that looks something like that so we can kind of see what these effects look like and then you're going to go up here to the program monitor and do export frame remember if you don't see this uh, button here you can go here and click plus and you can find that right here so any buttons that you might be missing you can create them there and then say okay but we already have that one so we're good so we're going to go over here and click export frame the format you're going to make it jpeg and just name this anything that you want. Call it Drifter JPEG and choose the path where you want the uh, file to be saved. So I can go to Browse and I'm going to click on the same folder that I have all my other files in and then say OK. So the next thing I want to do is import the next video that we're going to put in this. So I'm going to double click in my project window and download the next car racing video clip and then I'm going to drag it in the timeline. This uh, track also has an audio track so I'm going to right click on that and unlink it and just like the other one I'm going to mute this because I don't want to hear the audio while I'm working. So when I play this video you'll see that the beginning of this clip it starts off pretty blank and the car doesn't even come in until half halfway. So there's a couple ways that you can work around that. You can either just do this, make the car clip shorter and it starts right there. I just want to show you another tool that you can use to uh, do the same thing. All right, so let's go ahead and just shorten it from the back side. And I want it to be just about the same length as this clip here. And if you use this tool here called the slip tool, if you click in here and drag, you can make the video start at a later point in the video. So I'm going to pull this all the way out here and drop it and let's see how that video starts and stops now. Perfect, because I really want mostly just the dirt, not, a, not as much the car. So I want to put some text on top of this clip right here and I want the video to be showing just through the words. And this is something that is on the certification exam. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to line up my playhead with the beginning of this video and then I'm going to get my text tool and I'm going to type the name of this company TBC Racing. You can see I was using a big bold font. Let me do control A to select all of it. I'll make it a little bit smaller for now. I'm going to center it um, this way and then I'm going to center it in the align tool also. Now I want to change the spacing between these two so that's called the leading or letting. So I'm going to go over here. So this is just like in Photoshop you can make these adjustments here. You'll see if I hold my mouse over this zero I get the finger with the arrows that means I can click and drag. So I'm going to pull these up to be closer. I am going to make this TVC a bigger font. 
And then I'm going to get my select tool and then I'm just going to drag the corners of this. I want to fill most of this area with the, uh, the TBC racing. I'm also going to do some kerning. So I'm going to put the mouse in between the T and V. And like this is just like Photoshop. You see this VA that's kerning. I can click here and just pull in these letters to be a little bit tighter spacing. I'm going to do that with all the letters that are kind of spaced far apart a little bit. Since I'm going to have an image inside these letters, I want them to be as close together as possible. All right, and then I'm going to center that again. All right, so now we're ready to make it so that you can see just the video inside the letters only. So the way you need to do that, let's go over here and click on effects and we want to find a track mat key. There it is. So I want to take the track mat key and drag it on the video clip, not on the words, but on the video clip with the, with the image. And then I'm going to go up here to my effect controls and where it says track mat key right here and then it says mat I'm going to choose video 3 because you'll see my words are on video track 3 so that's the, um, the the track that I want to make the words show through so let's go ahead and back up on that and see how that looks all right pretty cool except that the text is giant so I need to make that fit better. So let's go back to essential graphics and whoops and make this smaller. There we go. Now let's try it. All right. So that is what I want. Let's pull this out to be the same time as this. Now I want this to um, have a transition on it, but I can't apply the transition on just one of the things. It needs to be grouped together in a nest. So if I hold the shift key and get both of those tracks, and then I right click on that, I can say nest. And we can call that nested sequence too, that's fine. And now you see it became one clip. Now I can go over here to video transitions and I wanna uh, put a transition called whip on here. So I'm going to put that in between here. It's going to give me a warning that there's not enough um, insufficient media, but I'm just going to ignore that because I tried it before and it still looks pretty cool. So I noticed when I made my nested sequence, you can see how it goes off there, like it ends, but yet it keeps going. The reason why is because I accidentally nested this audio clip with it. So I'm just going to do the same thing I did before where I right click on that and I can say unlink. Now the audio is not part of this nested sequence. So I can just go in here and I can just pull this in. This is where it actually stops like that. All right, so that should end there. All right, so the next thing I wanna to do to this second clip that we have, this nested sequence that we made, is to put the same effects on it that we used in the uh, the first video, that glowing, like blue lightning effect. So remember how to do that and do it the same way. You're gonna hold the Alt key and make a copy of that clip. And we're gonna do some edits on here. Go to blend mode and we're going to make this on screen. Extract. And you're gonna dump that onto this clip here. And then the next one we're gonna do is find edges. Find edges, drag that on that clip again. And then the next one is tint. Drag that on there. Notice how every time I add one of these effects, the controls for those effects come up here. So we'll be able to edit that again. And then I need to add a turbulent displace. And then the last one I want to add is the VR glow. 
ER Glow and drop that on there. Make sure that when you're doing these things that you're clicked on the very top um, copy that we made of that clip. We're going to go over here to the extract and we're going to put zero in all of these. And then we are going to move the, or we're going to put a stopwatch starting there for the white input level. And then we're going to move it ahead just a little bit. And we're going to change that to 180. Then under the find edges, you're going to check the invert button like this. Then you're going to go down to the tint and we're going to click the map white to. We're going to click on that and choose a nice blue color. Then let's go down to the turbulent displace and make the amount 100 and make the size 20 and then click on the anti-aliasing to high. Now we're going to go to the VR glow settings here and you want to change the luma threshold to 0.5. You want to change the glow radius to 30 and we're going to change the glow brightness to 4. Glow saturation, you're going to make that 10. And then you're going to change the, click on the use tint color, and then we're going to go and change this to a blue. I forgot to go up here and put the opacity stopwatch. So I'm going to go to the beginning of the video, or actually go up here and use this timeline here. Put the current time indicator between those two things here. Put an opacity stopwatch there, then bring this out here a little bit, and then make the opacity fade down. And you can move these again like I did last time. I might select all those keyframes and bump them out a little bit so it lasts, or just, you know, lasts a little bit longer or space the time out a little bit more to your liking. Let's try that out and see what we have. So then it just fades off. So you can also move these keyframes here. So if you want that opacity to last a little bit longer before it fades out, you can do that. Let me go ahead and render that so I can see it better. Render selection. Yeah, I think that looks better. Now let's put a whip transition at the very beginning of this copy too. So it's like the other one. So the next thing I'm going to do is to go over here and click on those little arrows to get back to my project files. I'm going to double click this and import this new video clip I have of like some blue smoke. I'm going to drag that on top of here and it is definitely going to be shortened. I'm not sure how long yet. And then I'm going to try to put this on a different blending mode to see what it looks like. All right, so while I was off camera, I made a few more edits to this um, clouds here. So you can see that when you click on here, let's go to effect controls. You click on that clip only. I changed my blend mode to color dodge. You don't have to do everything exactly like I did. Feel free to please play around with all the blending modes and get one that you like. And then I also have it timed so that the cross or that I put cross dissolves on the front and back and then I have it timed so that the blue clouds or the blue smoke stays on a little bit longer because I'm going to put a logo in there. So let's go ahead and put the uh, time indicator right there at the end where I have just that blue smoke. And then I'm going to go back into my project and I'm going to double click in here and you're going to look for this logo, which is right here, TBC logo PNG. So you're going to download that and you're going to drag that in on top of this file here. So there's one thing I want to fix before I finish this. I can still see like there's a little bit of those white areas on the logo that I don't want to see that if I click on that layer and then I just do the blend mode and I make sure it says darken, it shouldn't show or multiply. I'll try, I'll leave it on multiply. Either darken or multiply should get rid of any of that white stuff showing.
All right, so I'm going to pull that logo to come in when this logo just starts to fade off. So somewhere right about there. So I'm going to pull in this TBC logo and then I'm going to give it a cross dissolve. So let's go to effects, video transitions, let's put a cross dissolve on it there. And then I'm going to shorten it a little bit and put a cross dissolve on it there. So the only thing left now is to work on our audio a little bit. So you know I muted those two tracks that we had before. We can unmute those. And right now they're overlapping and it's also carrying on way over here. I want to shorten that so that it ends when our logo ends or maybe just slightly after. And I want to fade the audio out so that it doesn't end abruptly. So I'm going to get the pen tool here and click on this rubber band. This is called the rubber band. Remember, if you don't see it, click on here and say show um, audio keyframes. So I'm going to put a point there and then a point here at the end so that our audio fades out. And maybe here on this too at the beginning, it looks like it's already kind of fading. And then let's do it to this audio here because it's obviously very loud right there. So before we render or before we uh, export all of this, I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to say sequence render selection. Let's go to export and choose media and let's see we the preset for this we made this a little bit smaller than usual we actually made this a 720 so let's just go ahead and export it as 720 that's what all of our clips were that we imported and we can name this TBC racing mp4 the format h.264 I think all that is good. And then you can just say export. 